Hey guys, Mike here for a new tutorial. So today I will show you how to tweak the progress bar with GSAP. So I don't know if you have noticed, but when we enable the animation, the numbers here are not animated. So we are going to use GSAP to take care of the full animation and animate this number too. So let's start now. We have our code block. I have already loaded the GSAP library, by the way. So I don't do it here. We directly take care of the code. Okay, so first let's check how the element is made. I think it's right here. Okay, so we have the width here. And it's what we need to animate first. So we are going to use the same selector. GZAP from to our selector from to and what we want to animate is the width so from zero to one hundred percent. Let's check that first. And yes, I forgot here. Okay. Okay. It's working it's just a bit too fast, so let's add the duration here, the duration for second. By default is one second, I think. Right, okay. The change raising two while we are here, so we can check that everything working properly. Okay, as you can see, just a few lines, and we can already animate the progress bar better than the normal animation. So let's take care of the number now. First, let's change a little bit uh, all these things uh, to make it a bit more obvious. Okay, go back to the code here and the page here. Okay. So the number here, where is it? So it's not uh, a class, it's a content here. So let's use that class for the selector. GSAP from and what we have to do here is to use, uh, uh, I think I made a mistake right here. Ah, yes. That's why it was a bit messed up. Text content zero and use the same duration and is, or it will look weird if they don't have the same speed. Right, so as you can see, the number are animated <coughs> sorry because if i change that here if i put another duration you see it doesn't make any sense so be sure to use the same duration and effect and uh, there's a slightly problem here what we have to do is say so uh, this trick here takes Content one, it will run the, the number. As you can see, for example, to understand how this function works, if I put 10, right? So I don't give, I won't explain too much about it because uh, first I don't know how to explain it, but it's all in the documentation. You have the snap function here. So always check the GZAP C sheet. I always open it when I work with GZAP because there are so many things and I don't remember everything. So anyway, it works not bad. Let's check again. Here we fresh the page. Yes, except one thing, the percent symbol here, we need to add it. So, okay. Okay, not bad. 
one thing so it's that we have to enter the width here and we have 85 so we should enter 85 but to make it a bit uh, easier we will use a variable actually called target equal uh, document query selector and what we need it's uh, that one here that text content and then we use that one here target I check right so what does it mean it's it will read directly the content and use it here as a target for example, if I change, I put 55, right, I save the page, the width will directly go to 55. So it's even more convenient, we don't need to take care of the width, it will directly take it from here. All right, so it works, but we need to optimize it a little and add a little bit more function. The first thing is we are going to do is to add a timeline. So const timeline equal gzap timeline and then we use a default. So for the default we use Duration and is so we can remove them. And then our timeline, timeline, timeline. I save that. Where is the page here? Okay, because it's a timeline, they will play. They will play one by one. So we have to change a little things called okay the position parameter. Actually, we are going to use that one. Align with start of the most recently added child. What it means it it will start this timeline. This uh, twin will start when the, the previous one starts. We have only two, so it's perfect. I think I need to put a dash, maybe, but I forgot. Okay, good. So the thing now is we have our default here. So if we want to change the duration or effect here, elastic, we don't need to change for both of them. Just change it here. Let's do that. Okay, now what we are going to do is to use a scroll trigger so the animation can play when it comes into view. Because right now, if I start the page and the animation is not into view, it's already already finished playing. So we are going to use scroll trigger in our timeline. Scroll trigger, trigger. What we need is to use uh, the main uh, element class here. Okay, proxy progress bar. And let's check. Okay, I need to reload the page from the top. Check. Okay, it starts now. But you only play one time, so we can change that to with. Uh, Let's go to scroll trigger. Right, to collection. That one is perfect. So now it will play the animation, pause it, resume, and reset the animation. Let's show it here. So it's playing. Let's restart. Play, pause, continue. We start. Play, pause. If I go back, you will see we continue. 
Okay, so perfect. Now let's try something else because it works pretty well for one progress bar, but if we add another one, let's add uh, some margin here. Okay, and let's change that one for, uh, for example, 85. Save. Okay, it's working for that one, but both work at the same time. For the number is fine, but not for the width. So we have to make a timeline, a different timeline for each of them. So we don't do that manually. We do it here by code. Let's put some space here and let's create a function. So uh, const p bar go do document query selector all. We use the progress bar here. So we take care of all the progress bar. Oops, sorry, okay. And then for each Okay. So let's copy everything here. What we need, uh, we need that one. So for the width, for example, so const w, it will be the width. Well, element dot query selector. Right. Now we need for the text. Let's call the variable t, and it should be that one. Here. Uh, we want that one too. Let's copy it. Here's the target. So I have a different target for each of one, so we can change that. T. And that's it. We can copy the full code here. Let's comment it. It can be useful if we made a mistake or something. So we can write again. Oh, sorry, so here. We can remove that one here. And now we have our GSAP we can replace by our variable. So first element for the trigger. Now for the we is a W. And for that one it's T. Let's save that. Okay. Let's check again slowly. Okay. Okay. Now let's add another one to be sure. And one on one percent. Check again in the code. Okay, so they work. It works as expected. Uh, let's check again here. Here. Okay, so if we want to change the effect, we can. Uh, Power four for the easing or change the duration for and then it will work well for all the progress bar. I created a good just another ID to make it look a bit uh, better, maybe. How about replacing all these things so we don't have to touch the JavaScript? And we are going to use the data attributes. For example, if I add data speed and uh, put, uh, for example, two, 
n is when a dot of um, is n. Here we have a bounce out of dot out for that one. Let's do that here and add some variable. So, for example, can we speed equal element get three bit data speed and then we easing for data ease and now we replace here speed and easing let's start that to see if it's working. Maybe I need to add some default here. Yes, speed, speed, and for and power for dot out. Right. So what we are what we are doing now is to use the data attribute instead of uh, changing the code here, and this it means by default is for if there is no speed, is no data attribute for uh, this uh, progress bar, it will use for so for second, and for this thing we use this one. So this one has a two second with a bounce effect. All others are the default which are here. So it is pretty interesting. We can change if we want the speed for that one, data speed, and put 10 seconds. So we can customize our uh, in here data is an uh, elastic out. Let's go back here, save. Yes, this one is a 10 second, this one has the elastic with 4 seconds. So we can customize without changing the code now with the data attributes. And I think it's pretty cool. So that's it for this tutorial. And uh, see you in the next one.